What's up, guys? You're welcome to Emacom TV, where we publish news and politics. Uh, today, we have a trending news for you today, and the headline you read. Finally, Aisha Bari goes spiritual, invites prayer warriors to Asa Villa to tackle Nigerian problem. Kabal reacts to prayer. All right, before I proceed with today's news, please, if this is the first time you are watching any of our videos on our channel, there's a red subscribe button below this video. Now, just go ahead, hit that red subscribe button, click the bell icon beside it to remain updated whenever we publish news like this without you ever missing any any news again all right um aisha buari have just organized a prayer session to tackle nigerian problems in fact she has just gone a spiritual you know uh for some time now this lady our first lady have been having a series of running battle you get with some cabal she have been very outspoken she has actually spoken up about the ills in the society, but no one seems to care. Buari says she belonged to the bedroom. That's what Buari said. She belonged to the room and other rooms. You get so nobody seems to care about what is the heartbeat of this lady. You get she has actually uh, spoken out. In fact, there is no first lady that is as as outspoken as Aisha Buari. Even patient Jonathan was not at her as I've spoken like that. Patient Jonathan was only I've spoken about her husband's enemy. That's good Lord Jonathan's perceived enemies. But this one is a very big time critic of her husband policies and government. She has she has criticized the social investment scheme, which we all know was headed by Osibanjo. The social investment scheme you get program SIP was headed by Osibanjo, it is Osibanjo's brainchild policy. So she has criticized it, and this program had up to 500 billion naira actually budgeted for it. So the first lady have spoken. I'm just trying to tell you some of the uh, how outspoken she is. But you see, this time around, our uh, outspokenness, you understand me, is appears as if it's being taken for granted. So the first lady has gone spiritual. I want to show you the video right now of where she invites Islamic prayer warrior, you get, to actually tackle prayers of Nigerian problems, to take Nigerian problems spiritual and to actually go head on, you get, with the Nigerian monster called the Cabal. Remember she, last year, she voiced out, she screamed that her husband's government had been hijacked by the Cabal. Yes, she spoke out that her husband government have been hijacked by Cabal, uh, to which her husband actually replied and said that is a woman's talk, that she should not be given a very serious attention. You get. But we keep on seeing even up to last uh, last uh, month, that's September, when she came back, she returned to the country on September. You get that I think that this is two months now. This two months now. She returned to the country on september why she had been away in fact she'd been away for up to two months she was away in uk and that literally led to a lot of speculation that there's a rift between him and her husband and that was when the rumor um actually filtered in that Bari was getting married to um um sadia Uma, the minister of um uh, uh disaster and national i think something uh disaster she's a minister for uh disaster management okay so there was this rumor that actually went viral that the uh Bari was getting married to sadia omar but i think after the rumor actually got to its peak the first lady returned and when she returned before she returned there was this viral video of her screaming at the Asso rock at you know the mom and daura's daughter you know they were having a an exchange of words and in that video the first lady was seen to be at the top of her voice she actually came out and admitted that was a video you get that was a that was her in the video admitted she was the one that the video was actually you know, uh, spread on the internet by the daughter of Mama Daura. So you see, the first lady have been having a very serious running battle. Nobody knows what is in her heart. 
you get she is grieved and a lot of nigerians were not actually happy seeing that oh this is our first lady wow why was she screaming like this the problem was caused at my mind i don't want to go uh, in depth into some of this um uh issue i believe some of you are uh, aware of it for those of you who are not aware if you check some of my videos you are going to see some of those videos and what actually led uh to this you get so and again there have been this speculation that buari is actually late you get now they kind of said that the current president in answer rock now is not buari that buari died last year you get and that the current one now is um is um is Jibril from Sudan you get so you see guys the the nation you get is plagued with a lot of problems so the first lady here is trying to uh, profess solution to it by organizing a prayer session to pray for Nigerians problem but the question is how repentant are we how repentant how humble are our leaders because in the Bible Permit me to quote the Bible. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, I mean, sorry, in the book of Chronicle, where God was talking to Solomon, God told Solomon, if my people who are called by my name will humble my, themselves and seek my face and pray, he said, I, the Lord from heaven, I will hear their cry. If they are overtaken by calamity, by their enemy, and by problems, he said, if they pray facing this temple from anywhere they are in any part of the world, I, the Lord, I will hear and I will heal their land. You see, this is the, 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 uh, um, uh, the outlook you get. If you want to pray, you cannot just organize prayer for a cabal, for Nigerian, why their leaders are not even repentant. Their, their leader don't even want the prayer. Like you see in this video, you see that the cabal, you get, were in attendance. The cabal attended that prayer session. Now, the truth is, you see Abakiari. Abakiari is started to be one of the cabal. In fact, there is this rumor that once that she, he was the leader of the cabal. But it has come to foreknowledge that it is not him who is the leader of the cabal. It is Buari's nephew, Maman Daura, who is the leader of the cabal. You get it. So, the, the, in fact, Buari, one of Buari's friend, 45 years of um, uh, one of Buari's friend, revealed that it is Mama and Daura that brought Abakiari, and that Abakiari is like a puppet in the hands of Mama and Daura. That a lot of people in Buari's government today were actually installed there by Mama and Daura, the nephew to Buari. You get so you see this problem is plagued with a lot of prop with, with with a lot of crisis look at shawara's issue shawara now as i'm talking to you now shawara is in his fourth day of you know um, of hunger strike you get he has refused to even see any of his um his colleague he has refused to see and the ds are not ready to release him the ds has said on they said on um or was it on sunday when uh, take it back team went to DSS office to claim um, to, to, to claim um, Shawari you know before this time the DSS said nobody have come that they have gotten a receipt from the court you get it. the court order that Shawari uh, team have actually complied with the bail condition so they were ready to release Shawari that nobody has come for Shawari the Occupy Nigeria team went on Saturday and the DSS said that nobody will attend to them because they are not on session. You get it. They are not on session. So we are waiting to see. Even on Monday, they were, nobody was there to actually attend to them. Let's see today because today is going to make it the fifth day. Today, Tuesday. And if Shawara is not released, man, that's going to spell doom because this guy has not eaten. Today is the fifth day. He has not eaten. He started the hunger strike on Thursday. So as of today, when the, the Tuesday will make it a fifth day, which he has not eaten, his condition is very critical. In fact, Adejayu, you get it, one of the uh, social media activists said that Shore's condition is critical. It's critical. And you know one funny thing? The Yoruba nation are not even doing anything about it. They are not doing anything. 
all they are being uh, spoken about is about injustice meted to um uh, to to vice president Osibanjo. That's only where you see them being outspoken. But one of their own son, nobody, in fact, nobody has done anything. They have a lot of uh, ministers. They have a lot of ministers on the southwest. I'm talking about gospel ministers. They have a lot of politicians on the southwest, but nobody is, you know, is able to stand up to actually speak out for Shawore. Nobody. So we don't know. So what I'm just telling some of these instances to show you that there is a lot of problem with this Nigeria. And it is not prayer that is going to solve this problem because God cannot answer your prayer even when you yourself are not willing to, you know, for God to help you. God is not going to do that. He's not. Because before he does that, you must hand over your will to him. That's why when you hear Christ say, let not my will be done, let your will be done. That's when God comes in. Because if God comes in, he does his own will. He doesn't do your own will. So I don't know what you guys think. Do you think that the prayer session organized by, by Aisha Bwari goes a long way to have, and will, will go any, any way to have um, effect on the Nigerian problem? Let me read some of the reaction of what people are saying. Somebody say, so Aisha is good in organizing prayer. I thought she only good in the other room. Another person here said, if only all the people here will do things right, we won't need prayers. It is what I just said. If everybody will do the right thing, in fact, we will not even need prayer. Prayer will just be as a backup. Another person here said that they will steal from the nation in private and pray for the nation in public. Useless prayers. Another person here said, does Aisha need prayer before she went to holiday away in London? Nigeria does not need any fucking prayer. Our leader just needs to do what is right and watch Nigeria progress. Yes, another person here said, thank you very much. Africa, keep doing the wrong thing and covering up with prayers. God will come down and rule the country for us. Another person here said, how do criminals feel when they pray to God? Be our distributor, okay? Another person here said, the fear of second coming of a new wife stroke, new first lady. I shall be like every agenda of bringing a new wife is condemned. Back to sender. Another comment here said, we don't need prayer. We need action. Great minds. Heaven help those who help themselves. Another person here said, where is Maman Dara? Another person here said, she should hold prayer for her husband first. Another comment here uh, Okay, another comment here says, so unfortunate for uh, who is currently suffering in Naira land. Okay, let me leave that one. Another comment here says, who has, who has a prayer they've been praying for before change? Another comment here says, if this country needs prayer alone, we will have been the most powerful, the richest, and the most sought after on earth. The average Nigerian lacks reason. Ask a Buari or any other politician supporter why he supports Buari. Trust me, the nonsense that will come out of his mouth will, will vibrate your hand to give him a hot slap. Another comment here says, stupid country may thunder fire all of them there. Alright, so there are a lot of comments here, but I'm not going to go deep into uh, reading all of them. Let me read the last one here. It says, religion forcing down people's throats. See how she's forced to sit with her enemies you get so that is it so what do you guys think do you think that this prayer you understand me is actually um the solution to nigerians problem or for nigerian leaders to do the right thing what do you actually think i want you to drop your comment below let me know what you think about this it is always my pleasure to be among scholars who are the custodians of the teachings of Islam. Their companionship is a regular source of spiritual cleansing and rebirth. It is important that as a nation should remember our purpose in life, which is to worship Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us strive to be better Muslims. That way we can be better spouses and parents better neighbors as well as better citizens. May I call on Muslim Ummah to emulate the teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in promoting the spirit of tolerance 
love, harmony, peaceful coexistence among people of different faiths in the country. Thank you very much and God bless you.